Hi, welcome to TFR Let's Talk, and this is your host, Sapna Bhartia. My next guest is Chip Childers, Executive Director of Cloud Foundry Foundation. Uh, today, we are going to talk about uh, CICD. Uh, of course, uh, it is well established that CICD is playing a very big role, a very important role in today's modern infrastructure. It's not just about delivering software fast, but it's also it's become critical from the point of view of security. So if I ask you why CICD is becoming important because people are trying to move a lot of things in developers pipeline, there's nothing which is an afterthought. So let's just start there, the, the role and importance of CD and CI in modern uh, environments. I think one of the most important things to remember is that the journey that the industry has been going on is uh, filled with all kinds of you know, new technologies, new projects, new, um, uh, you know, new products and services that are out there. Um, you know, we, we talk about it in terms of the, the cloud context, right? The adoption of cloud technologies. We also talk about it um, in the adoption of open source tool chains that, uh, that fall into the cloud native category. Um, but all, all of that is actually in service of fundamentally shortening the time to market or um, I guess using a very specific term, uh, the talked time from feature uh, being initially developed, rolling out, users getting it and experiencing it, and then providing that feedback back to the original, right? So the talk time is how quickly can you go from, uh, you know, a unit of production and in software we produce, you know, code or applications. Um, you can start that unit and get it out and into the hands of the user or the consumer. So. We're all trying to shorten the amount of time that it takes for that cycle. And that's where cloud infrastructure matters. That's where, um, uh, that's where uh, platform as a service can help immensely. Um, but one of the uh, longstanding at tools that you use as part of this chain are the collection of, of CI platforms or CD platforms or both, right? Uh, continuous, continuous X, right? You are essentially trying to create this world where developers are continuously able to flow uh, software through the whole uh, supply chain out to the users. CI CD has two parts. One is C, uh, CI, one is CD. Uh, depending on who you talk to, some say, hey, yeah, CD is all that matters. CI is just part of that. So if, if I ask you from your perspective, how do you look at things? I don't think that the specific tool matters a whole ton, right? So I'm, I'm an, I always think about things in terms of outcomes. And the outcome you're looking for is how quickly can you get from lines of code being changed or created to that code impacting an end user. So in order to do that, the presumption is that your architecture is right, you've got you know good uh, API addressable infrastructure, but that you can continuously move that code through a pipeline that involves testing it, uh, it involves integrating the rest of the system with it, testing that whole package, and then it involves getting it deployed. So you know if you if you come at this from the perspective of a continuous delivery tool, right? Let's say you're creating a tool like that, you're going to think about the delivery part of that that pipeline as being the most important thing. Um, you know, if you're coming at it from the perspective of a maybe classic uh, CI system, right, focused on that continuous integration of the software and the commits, then you you might see deployment as a, just a natural extension of uh, of CI, right? So, uh, you know, if, if you're speaking with someone and they have a particularly strong opinion about whether CD matters more than CI or CI matters more than CD, I would say probably because of the tool that they are uh, most familiar with or are helping to build. In the end, they both have to be there because untested code quickly going out into production is pretty dangerous, right? Um, but well-tested and continuously tested code that never makes it to production, kind of useless. So. Without those two, there, you really don't have the whole um, whole software supply chain flowing in that smooth way that you want to. How much uh, things have changed? Also, before we started discussing, you said there's a renewed interest within the community to, 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 to discuss more about CICD. So, so let's talk about how it used to be patchwork and how things are getting better with all these new open source tools. Things are improving. I mean, I arguably, um, I would argue today that the that an enterprise or uh, even a startup has no excuse to say that oh the technology is too immature or uh, it's too complicated to get you know the right open source project or the right uh, the right uh, SaaS based approach um, to to create the continuous delivery 
and continuous integration pipeline that that uh, that we know works really well. Um, I say that because there's a plethora of open source projects that provide um, you know those those building blocks for CI systems. There's a bunch that provide building blocks for continuous delivery systems. Um, you know, but if you put your code on GitHub, well, you've got GitHub Actions, which essentially is becoming uh, you know the, the, the uh, another way to do uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery. Now, where where the distinction starts to become valuable is when a tool specializing in let's say advanced deployment approaches, um, and and we're seeing the the rise of these advanced deployment patterns. Right, think about it as like a canary node rollout or a blue green deployment or a number of different things. We're seeing the the embedding of those practices and patterns in both continuous delivery tools, as well as in um, the platforms that are going to host the application. So, you know, in, in the Cloud Foundry system, for a long time, we've had different ways to do blue green deployments or canary node based deployments, and it's just kind of inherent to the platform. Um, Kubernetes does a great job of rolling upgrades as well, and and of the pods that are inside of it. Um, that, that hosts the applications. So both components, the, the, uh, the hosting location for the software you're, you're pushing through the pipeline and the, the different pipeline tools um, are all getting very sophisticated patterns baked into them, which really makes it, um, like I said a little bit earlier, uh, essentially you have no excuse as a software practitioner or as a person who leads a team of software developers to not have um, a fully implemented continuous delivery of your software um, certainly with with gates where you, you know you might decide um, you know there, there's a counter example I guess if if software's changed too quickly and too rapidly in a way that is visible to an end user um, that is something that you do need to be thoughtful about because different user types are going to be more tolerant to uh, an evolving user interface that if it changes daily uh, versus maybe some that could only see it change you know once a quarter and that's still kind of a big deal for them. Um, but you can you can build these types of gates into any of these systems. So things are getting uh, have gotten a lot better since when you know I was writing production code um, uh, you know over a decade ago. Um, it, it was a big hurdle to to get to the the nice smooth cycles that um, are so powerful today, uh, but now it's it's quite trivial. Of course, uh, we have a CF push, but when it comes to CI CD, how far it goes, uh, or how, what are its limitations? You know that's why you you know uh, the California community you know they leverage other tools also. Yeah. So when we've done user surveys, um, what we've seen is that across the users of the open source Cloud Foundry um, project, as well as uh, users of the the downstream commercial distributions and and as a service offerings, um, something approaching ninety percent of the organizations pair CI and CD systems with uh, the Cloud Foundry application platform. The, the whole point there is that the uh, each component of the, the 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 larger system needs to do what it does best, right? Um, the the Cloud Foundry APIs work really well when used in the context of a of a CI tool or a CD tool, um, and so that's that's been pretty great, right? It 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 works remarkably well. Um, it has all of those atomic operations of exposed that, that you might want to sew together into different workflows. Now, the, the beauty of CF push is that that's, that's essentially one operation, right? It's here's the code, put it in. Um, but, but you could turn off things like automatically start it up and then you could have each one of those steps occur, um, you know, based on the CI pipelines logic. And so everybody kind of implements that workflow in a slightly different way, uh, but we've got a great, very rich API available for doing it. Um, what you see in the command line is, uh, is, is a bunch of very sensible defaults so that as a developer, if I'm working in my developer space, when I do that first CF push, essentially there's a bunch of things that just get figured out and they're sensibly defaulted for you and you get some running software very quickly. Um, the beautiful thing about an abstraction like that and any abstraction is that sometimes you 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 can dip kind of one step lower and you can see how that abstraction was put together and those those lower level pieces can then be repurposed 
The other thing that the Cloud Foundry community has been doing is making sure that we're um, you know, we're taking some of the the aspects of the platform that uh, can be used independent of the whole system, and making those projects available to uh, the you know the broader open source community in ways that that integrate well. So I'll give you a few examples from some of the live streams that our, our developer relations team did uh, over the last month. Um, you know, how do you support um, using the uh, cloud native build pack project uh, or library of cloud native build packs called Paquetto, right? That's a Cloud Foundry Foundation community project. Um, it takes years of build pack experience and, and embeds it into the into the cloud native build pack API compliant um, uh, specification. You could use that and pair it with something like Tecton which is an open source project that uh, it kind of started out life as, as uh, part of Knative um, at Google. Uh, it was sort of maybe reinvented a bit um, and, and in, made independent and then moved into what became the, the Continuous Delivery Foundation, one of our sister, sister foundations. Um, so Tecton is essentially a tool that you could use to create um, a CD and CI experience uh, that's very Kubernetes native. And one of the core building blocks that it has is the ability to use the build pack approach to container creation. Um, so we've gotten to demonstrate that to uh, to a pretty uh, excited audience. Um, we've had a really good time uh, exploring some of the uh, CI and CD tools that are as a service, right? So GitHub Actions, uh, Circle CI, Travis CI, um, really. Any CI CD system uh, that, that you can think of, it is either it are either already has native support for a Cloud Foundry API endpoint, um, or it's frankly quite trivial to add it uh, as a user. When you do talk about all these uh, open source projects and even uh, sister foundation, we cannot not talk about CNCF and <laughs> Kubernetes. Uh, how does uh, Cloud Foundry kind of help or work, you also have a Kubernetes distribution also to make CI CD easier for uh, Kubernetes because what you I remember when you said, you know, that Cloud Foundry is more or less like a developer experience uh, for Kubernetes users. So so talk about uh, from CI CD perspective and Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry. I gave one example, right, where some of our technology pairs well with with other projects that are that are designed to work on top of Kubernetes as a way to host applications, right? Um, so so stepping back, the industry um, and I would say the user base of all of these different technologies, and in particular Kubernetes, um, have reached a point where there's a, there's a loud chorus talking about developer experience, right? There are a lot of projects that are very focused on that. Um, that developer experience is, is sort of what the Cloud Foundry community has been working on, um, at least since uh, the foundation started and, and I joined when it started back in 2015. Um, the, you know, the people working on the project uh, for several years prior, also very focused on developer experience, right? So this is kind of our our community's, um, uh, you know, uh, let, let's just say it the it's the blood that flows through the veins of our community is a, a focus on that developer experience. So we've got a great new modern infrastructure abstraction. That's what Kubernetes is, and. That infrastructure abstraction uh, is extraordinarily powerful, and you could do a lot with it if you understand it, um, and it, if you know how to, uh, you know, manipulate all of the objects that are that are exposed in that API, and you can extend it through CRDs, and that's wonderful. Um, but what that doesn't optimize for is the, uh, it, you know, is the person who's writing um, a Node.js application wanting to optimize the flow from Node.js code, well-tested code where a bunch of unit tests run, integration tests run, deployment, um, and then frankly, you know, the day two operations questions like, are you getting log, log aggregation going? So the that flow from code to running application is, again, the problem that we should all be focused on. And that's what I think about when I describe developer experience, right? Making that as simple as possible. So Kubernetes is um, incredibly pervasive right now, and it's growing in, in its pervasiveness. Um, you know, every hyperscaler, uh, hyperscale cloud provider offers it. Um, uh, virtually every um, uh, infrastructure company or you know traditional uh, enterprise infrastructure company is offering a Kubernetes distribution. Um, what the Cloud Foundry community has done is we've said, um, 
we we had an architecture that was created and we, we still have it. Um, it's very virtual machine centric because that was what was available at the time. Um, but Kubernetes is now everywhere. So we're taking that architecture and uh, all of the benefits that the you know hundreds of thousands of developers around the world that use CF get, and we're applying that to a Kubernetes native infrastructure space. So it's a, it's a layer that goes on top of a Kubernetes cluster. Um, you know, it could be deployed on top of uh, of the Google Cloud Kube um, service or the Microsoft Azure, uh, the Tanzu platform, uh, raw Kubernetes that you know you get yourself. Really, any Kubernetes distribution, um, CF should be able to run effectively on top of it. And you know, I'll actually point to DigitalOcean. Um, out of all the cloud providers, they have the the simplest and easiest infrastructure API and you know dashboard to just get a simple you know get make infrastructure really simple right they've done an amazing job with that their kube service as well super easy to get started um, but then if we pair it with something like the the CF for Kate's project that layers right on top then as a developer who's working with the infrastructure that was easy to provision, um, my application ex developer experience working with it becomes that much better. Chip, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about a CI CD aspect of Cloud Foundry and uh, Cloud Native Original. Thank you. Absolutely. Great to be here. As we're always supposed to do, I need to encourage anyone who has an interest in, uh, in, in developer experience, um, in particular developer experience where it um, is on top of Kubernetes or where it intersects with CI and CD tools um, to consider coming, joining our awesome community uh, at our uh, at our summit. Um, we're, we're holding one uh, global virtual summit this year. Uh, we had a lot of fun doing two last year, but um, but we think we could we could really maximize the community engagement with each other if we bring it together in one. Um, that's going to be coming up um, in, at the end of July, so it'll be uh, July twenty first and twenty second. You can learn more about that at, at cloudfounder.org. Um, and, you know, we'd love to have anybody with, with an interest. Uh, feel free to pop on in and, and meet our amazingly welcoming community.